Okay, hi, I'm Pete Rogers, MD. I'm gonna be talking about protein supplements. Are protein supplements good for you or bad for you? And I'm gonna say, in general, I think they tend to be a bad idea, but it does depend on the situation. If you're 20 years old and you're lifting weights and you wanna get stronger faster, you can make an argument that there's some benefits to eating meat or taking an animal-based protein supplement. If you're over 40 and you're scared of getting cancer, you should run in the opposite direction. Now, here's why. Animal protein is different than plant protein. Animal protein contains more leucine and more methionine. Leucine and methionine are uh, special types of amino acids. We're gonna go into those in more detail in just a sec. For example, let's talk about cow's milk, all right? Cow's milk, when you drink cow's milk, it will increase a chemical in your blood called insulin-like growth factor, which is kind of like insulin. It has an anabolic effect. So anabolic effect is something that stimulates a cell to grow, can sometimes stimulate a cell to divide, to replicate. Well, if you want to build your muscles bigger and faster, you might want faster cell growth and cell replication. But if you're older, over 40, you don't want speeded up cell division, which might increase the risk of you getting cancer or of cancer speeding up its cell division and replication. In addition, it's thought that Increasing one's insulin-like growth factor and these effects of animal protein may cause accelerated aging. And by that I mean when you talk about how DNA replicates itself, the DNA fork has to open up like a train track opening up. And there's one leading strand on which the DNA polymerase rapidly goes all the way to the end and makes a copy, a complementary strand, all right? Then on the other side, which gradually opens up, the, you keep on having to go in the opposite direction. And you initially, you eventually cannot lay down an RNA primer and attach DNA polymerase to the end of the chromosome, and so you can't replicate that end part. That's called the like telomere segment, like the little caps on shoelaces. And the point is, every time a cell divides, it gets the chromosome gets a little bit shorter on that side. And there's something that's called a Hayflick limit. Hayflick was a scientist, 1930s, 40s, and 50s, working with human fetal tissue cultures. And he noticed that even if you put the cells in the refrigerator for like a year, you take them out and they still grow, grow at the same rate. They know how many times they divided. And a somatic cell, meaning a non-germline cell, not an ovary, sperm, uh, or egg cell, will tend to divide. There's some different types of cells, but in general, only get about 60 cell divisions or so, all right? And the point is, something that's accelerating the rate at which that cell divides will accelerate the rate at which that cell reaches what is called the Hayflick limit, after which time it can no longer divide, it becomes senescent and is an increased risk to die. So the point being is it's thought that if you speed up cell division, you are speeding up the rate at which you reach the Hayflick limit and potentially accelerating the rate at which you age and in which you will die, all right? Um, so that's the good thing about ILGF, when you're young, speed up muscle growth potentially for a weightlifter. Bad thing about it when you're older, increased risk of cancer and potentially accelerated aging. Next thing we'll talk about is leucine. Leucine is a branch chain uh, amino acid, it side chains like a methylpropane. And so leucine is the main amino acid that has an excitatory effect upon what is called the mTOR system. mTOR means mammalian target of rapamycin and that's just a fancy way of of describing this nutrient sensing pathway. And it's as if you had a contractor who wants to build a building. When he wants to build the building, before he starts to pour the foundation and make the building, he wants to make sure he's got all his materials. He's got his cement, he's got his bricks, he's got his windows, he's got his electrical stuff, you name it. All right, well, the mTOR pathway, before a cell can be ready to replicate or make a bunch of proteins and expand its size, mTOR makes sure that all the nutrients are available and the biggest rate limiting step is to make sure that there's enough leucine available. There's a lot more leucine in animal protein than there is in plant protein. So when mTOR has all its ingredients, especially its leucinine, it can send a signal for the cell to grow and divide. And so what I'm saying is again, 20 year old bodybuilder, get bigger, stronger, faster. Leucine is something that you want. You're 40 years old, you might have a low grade prostate cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer. You don't want this stuff on board. I recommend 100% vegan diet. It's not a guarantee it'll slow your cancer down, but it might help. It's worth a try. Um, next thing, uh, cow versus human. You know, a human baby milk only has about 6% protein in it. Cow milk has about 18% protein, three times as much. The point being is that Humans don't need much protein. That's about as fast as a person's ever gonna grow when they're a baby, all right? And 6% protein. So adults 
really probably only need you know about five percent maybe less than that four percent protein so what I'm trying to say is a lot of these high protein diets they just make people sick there's a good article in Consumer Reports there's been a couple versions of it like well, let's say around 2012 where they talked about problems with protein supplements sometimes it's poor manufacturing and they're contaminated by heavy metals and just the protein itself intrinsically um, puts a lot of extra work upon the kidneys what do kidneys do? Kidneys remove nitrogen from the body. You only have nitrogen and protein. There is no nitrogen in fats. There's no nitrogen in carbohydrate. It's only in protein. Those are the three macronutrients, by the way. We get our calories from fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. And it's only the protein that has the nitrogen. So when you're eating a lot of protein, your kidneys have to do a lot more work. They actually, when you eat a lot of animal protein, they shift into something called hyperfiltration. It's like working extra shifts for your kidneys. And if you do that every day for decades, you increase the risk of early onset kidney failure. In addition, the animal protein has a lot more methionine. Methionine, and there's also a little bit more cysteine in animal protein as compared with plant protein. That contains a sulfur on the uh, amino acid side chains. The sulfur, its metabolism during degradation, it will sometimes be separated from the, the initial parent molecule and it'll be converted into sulfuric acid and it'll cause an acidosis within the human body, a metabolic acidosis. The metabolic acidosis has to be buffered. The blood has to maintain its pH so all its, its chemical reactions run correctly. In order to buffer that pH, it'll take some calcium from the bones, like calcium carbonate, for example, and then that will be uh, excreted through the kidney. So you get calcium in the urine. That's called calciuria. Well, that calcium being excreted by the kidney will then sometimes precipitate within the kidney tubules. If those kidney tubules become occluded by calcium precipitation, that will decrease the function of that kidney. So taking lots of protein supplements and getting your protein intake way above 6%, you know, way above 10%, especially as, as many bodybuilders and other individuals do, especially when they're young. These young guys are so crazy about taking protein supplements. Not a smart, smart idea. They're increasing the risk of pushing themselves into kidney failure. Okay? In addition, it's not just it's the calcium precipitating, it's the excess workload on the kidney, uh, management. The kidney also uh, manages that metabolic acidosis. It, it creates ammonia in response to that. In addition, besides precipitating the small kidney tubules, bigger precipitates of uh, calcium, whereby it converts from being liquefied and soluble to becoming solid um, and permanent, damaging the kidney, it'll form kidney stones. Kidney stones are no fun. It's not that easy to remove a kidney stone when it gets big. They can uh, do lithotripsy up above. They can place a scope to go up through to Johnson. The scope's about the size of your thumb, about a centimeter in diameter. It's called a, a cystoscope, a cystoscopy, because the bladder is a cyst, and they go up in the bladder, and then they retrograde, go up the ureters, try to fish out the stone. It is no fun. No guy wants a thumb-sized thing going up his Johnson, okay? Um, so that's one of the problems with kidney stones. Um, in addition, it's a sort of an essential amino acid for cancer growth, methionine. So what I'm basically saying is, unless you're trying to rapidly bodybuild as a young guy, I recommend trying to minimize your intake of animal protein. And then be careful because a lot of these protein supplements have poor quality control and they'll have contaminants in them. And animal protein also comes on board with extra nitrogenous things because there'll be creatinine and creatine relatively unique to animal protein in comparison with plant protein. More nitrogen load upon those kidneys. Not good for the kidneys. You're overworking your kidneys. Uh, so uh, that's uh, our talk for protein supplements today.